Good morning and happy Friday. Uh, Connect Groups, thanks for a great missions month, the entire month of November. We focused on uh, God's plan for people, His love for people, and that includes us. God loves us, uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. That includes you and me. And uh, So receive His love and pass that love on as Jesus has uh, modeled so, so well for us. He's so good. Uh, over the last several weeks, we we heard a, a, a range of scriptures and testimonies and, and calls that we could participate in God's plan to love the world. Uh, on the first week, I presented an opportunity to think about our local situation here in Worcester, Worcester County, and we heard from Jackie Apia as well as Derek Patterson on how we could connect and have a heart for foster children and um, and, and also uh, men who are coming out of uh, lives of addiction into sobriety. So uh, that was powerful, it was, and it was right from our, our church, right from our body, our people speaking about what they're engaged in. And that, that pushed us into the, the next week where Pastor Steve and Dr. Lynn Roy gave us a, a, a word, and they gave us updates and testimony from what God's doing in our global ministry, but they also brought in some guests who gave us opportunity to think about how we can participate. So just to refresh, if you're interested in praying and have it in your heart to go to China to be with John and Deborah Rexford and love on and minister and be available to Chinese university students, we want you to consider traveling with Russ and Helen who told us about uh, their experiences in China. And then uh, if you want to stay local and engage with um, children in the foster care system, through a camp that's run uh, by Royal Family Kids, and that ministry was represented by Lori Feneff, who uh, was just so thrilled to be back uh, in our church, a church he was a member at for many, many years. So these are two areas. If you're interested, see uh, Steve and Lynn, or, or you'll be hearing more from uh, those groups if you've already signed up. And then the, the following week, we had two more guests, Bishop Benjamin from Ukraine and Pastor Daryl from Canada, and gave us challenge as to crossing borders and God's plan to go beyond our comfort zone. Pastor Daryl gave us insight from the Beatitudes on how we can do that and what that looks like. And then Bishop Benjamin and Sunday night gave us an opportunity to to pray with understanding. He told us his story and his his own his own family history of being uh, persecuted uh, within the the context of communism, uh, but all the while really wanted to let us know that the being a Christian is not about whether or not you're being persecuted, but it's about knowing God and intimately, personally knowing Him. And we prayed and we prayed together and it was a powerful time, which kind of connected back to Pastor Steve's message that um, when the gospel was being spread, it wasn't just about being comforted. Um, maybe Pastor Dare was speaking of this as well, going beyond those borders. And in the case of the Apostle Paul and Silas, they were thrown into prison but it was there that the Philippian jailer was saved. And uh, we're given this kind of deep understanding of, of God's plan that it may involve some momentary affliction on our end so that his purpose is fulfilled, that God's will to seek and save the lost, as proclaimed by Jesus, his will in, in 1 Timothy is that all men might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, um, uh, uh, 2 Peter 3 talks about uh, that God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God wants people saved. And sometimes he'll put us in some extreme environments so that that will will be done. And that's an exciting part. It can also cause fear and apprehension and, uh, and, and a whole range of emotions in between. But the scripture I close with as we, as we ministered last week in water baptism was from Romans chapter 12, which is, for me, the key to moving my mind so that I can work with God's will. Because I know as a human, I'm, I'm opposed to God's will. I'm selfish. I'm self-absorbed, self-oriented. I, I have my own desires. I, I have to turn to the living God and say, God, show me your desires and then change me so I want what you want. And that begins, Romans 12, 1 tells us, when we present ourselves by the mercy of God, as living and holy sacrifices. We present our bodies before Him. So when we give money to global ministry, missions, that's a presentation. It's a living sacrifice. I'm not going to go to Duncan's 
and and uh, buy donuts because I gave that to the Lord so other people could receive spiritual food. When we come to a prayer gathering, when we invest in, in our prayer life, when we stand in the gap for the lost, we're giving up time that we could have spent indulging ourselves. Reading a great book, watching a great film. No, we're sacrificing. It's a living sacrifice. And we're there praying and interceding. And of course, if we go, if we go to the Royal Family Kids Camp or we go to China or anywhere in between, we're presenting ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice. According to this scripture, this is our spiritual worship. This is where the Spirit interacts with us because we're now worshiping and aligning ourselves with God. We're now turning our face towards Him, not towards other things and other idols and other people and other objectives, not even ourselves. And there's something powerful happens. We are conformed no longer to the world, but transformed. And our mind is renewed so that then, with the renewing of the mind, we can discern what God's will is, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. What I want to do is invite you to turn and have discussion around another text that lays out three claims of God's will. 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if we're wondering, hey, practically, what do I do? What does it look like when I begin to align myself with God's will? Well, we start rejoicing all the time. Everything makes us happy, even suffering, because we understand God's got a purpose he's achieving in it. Secondly, we pray without ceasing. Our prayer life isn't a burden anymore. It becomes part of a habit and part of a, 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 an expectation. We're living in the Spirit and walking with God. And then thirdly, we're giving thanks in all circumstances. And it sounds actually pretty much the opposite of what conformity to the, to the world looks like. So the discussion should revolve around these three items. Talk about them. How, how are we doing as it relates to these three? How do these make us feel? How do they challenge us? How are they pushing us forward? How can we grow into them? And, and then let's pray one for another that we will indeed embrace the will of God and pray that we will show the evidence of discerning God's good and acceptable and perfect will by living out these three. Oh Lord, would you bless us now? And as we present ourselves in this conversation, be present. Be with us. Speak to us and transform us. Renew our mind so we can live in your will. That which is good, acceptable, and perfect. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy. Thanks so much. Have a great time. God bless.